Um, so I'm just going to give a brief overview of some of the ultrasound guided procedures. I know that we've kind of already covered some of them, and there are a whole host of different ultrasound guided procedures out there, but I'll just talk about a couple and just give a brief overview. Um, so I wanted to mention briefly before that there is a difference between ultrasound guided and ultrasound assisted procedures. Um, I'm going to be focused on um, ultrasound guided procedures, but that's when you have the ultrasound and you're using the ultrasound during the procedure where you're visualizing the needle. Um, but ultrasound assisted procedures is when you use the ultrasound before the procedure and then um, you just like mark where you want the needle to go. Um, and then during the procedure, you don't use ultrasound. So um, the pictures on the right, you can see this, both of them are um, ultrasound guided procedures with the dynamic guidance. So you can see this is a transverse view of the needle and you can kind of see the ring down effect that comes with the needle as you're visualizing it. And then the bottom one is a longitudinal view of the needle um, in the vein, you can kind of see the tip. So again, there's a whole host of different ultrasound guided procedures. We've talked about a couple of them, but um, I'm gonna mainly be focusing on peripheral venous axis, abscess localization, and foreign body localization. So the top picture over here is abscess localization, and then the bottom picture is foreign body localization, but I'll talk about them more later. So um, just in general, before getting into it, um, you can use peripheral or central venous axis you can do ultrasound guidance with. But um, when I was looking into it, I kind of, I didn't know what the differences of like when you would use peripheral versus when you'd use central. So I just wanted to talk about that briefly. So with peripheral access, um, it's more commonly used in the hospital because it's safer and easier to obtain and just generally less painful. Um, but, um, and it's preferred for patients who only need an IV access for a short amount of time and direct access to the central circulation isn't really necessarily needed um, and smaller gauge catheters would work well. But central access is preferred for patients who are taking sclerosing medications or are on vasosuppressors or just with severe volume depletion. Um, so again, okay. Okay, um, ultrasound guided peripheral intravenous placement. So with ultrasound guidance, that's really helpful for patients that are obese because it's kind of hard to see the peripheral veins. Um, it's also good for patients who have a history of IV drug abuse, um, history of chemotherapy or multiple IV punctures for prior treatment. Um, ultrasound is really good because um, sometimes with peripheral veins, it can be hard to palpate, so it's helpful. And also, like patients, they vary anatomically from person to person, so it's really helpful to have ultrasound where you can kind of view exactly where the vein is. Um, and ultrasound is also really good because um, you can see like different, like a pre-existing thrombus in the vessel, and you don't want to put an IV there. So um, that's really helpful to see, and ultrasound can also locate valves. So with peripheral IV placement, there are a bunch of different complications. You can have phlebitis, infiltration, infection, artery or nerve injury, air embolism, thrombosis, hematoma, or line failure. And there's, there's more, but um, ultrasound guidance in general just lowers the complication ra rates and increases success rates and saves time. So all in all, it's a win-win. Use the ultrasound. Um, and also just for fun, Peripheral access generally uses the deep brachial vein, basilic vein, cephalic vein, and medial cubital vein. So you can kind of see. Okay, so the next one that I'm going to be talking about is ultrasound guided abscess localization. And this one's actually kind of cool because um, if you have a patient that has soft tissue infections and you're um, kind of suspicious of an abscess, ultrasound is great for visualizing this. So you can kind of see on the top photo. Um, this is a patient who has soft tissue cellulitis and the um, black parts are the fluid that's going in between the um, tissue layers, the fascia layers. Um, and it has this cobblestone appearance that's really um, typical for cellulitis. Um, and then with ultrasound, it's really good because um, you can see even with an early abscess when fluid accumulates in the cellulitic tissue, you can see that on ultrasound. So like this one, it's very, um, not localized, it's kind of disorganized. Um, the fluid here is more centralized and the soft tissue is surrounding it. 
Um, and ultrasound is really good for this because like compared to physical exam, ultrasound has a really high sensitivity and specificity. Um, so yeah, once an abscess is formed, it kind of looks like this top picture where there's hypoechoic fluid collection, and it can be surrounded by a brightly hyperechoic wall. Um, that's not always the case. You can see in the bottom picture, it's not like super bright like this one is. Um, and abscesses can also have internal loculations or debris, so you can kind of see it here. Um, and also, um, I wanted to emphasize that if you think that there is an abscess, you should put colored Doppler to double check because there are other fluid collections like Baker cysts or hematomas or vascular structures that look like abscesses. But um, color Doppler can help make the distinction because with those fluid collections, you should have a vascular flow in the middle and centralized. But with um, abscesses, there should be absent vascular flow only on the outside. Um, and so, yeah, and then the bottom picture, this is a picture that I saw of them like taking out the abscess, which I thought was really cool. So, yeah. Um, and then with ultrasound guided foreign body localization. So I, when I was looking at this, I kind of went down a rabbit hole because there are so many different pictures out there of like different foreign bodies and it's really cool. So I highly recommend looking at them. Um, I just put a couple because time's sake, but it's really cool. So look at them. But um, yeah, so with foreign bodies, if they're retained and it becomes in the acute phase, it can cause infection and even morbidity if it's not removed. So it's important to get them taken out. Um, and with plain radiographs, it's only really reliable for glass or metal. But ultrasound is really good because you can visualize um, foreign bodies like wood or plastic or fish bones or even cactus spines. So it's really cool. Um, and again, ultrasound has a really high sensitivity. So with ultrasound, you can locate the foreign body and then also see the other vascular structures around it. And that's really helpful for operative planning and just easy removal of the foreign material. Oh, going back to these pictures, um, this, is, this was the toothpick that was in a patient. And then th these are bullet fragments that are in the liver. And you can see with this one, it has the comet tails that come from the bullet fragments, which I thought was cool. Um, and then in general, most foreign bodies, they appear as hyperechoic structures on ultrasound. And with some um, foreign bodies like stone, wood, or plastic, you can see acoustic shadowing with like varying degrees. So in the top photo, you can see there's some acoustic shadowing here. This one is a splinter that's being taken out. Um, and then also you can see reverberation artifact that um, comes with comet tails and that can be, or comet tails and that can be seen with um, glass or metal like we saw with the bullets, um, bullet fragments. And then um, in addition, you can have inflammatory hypochoic fluid collections and that it can surround the foreign body and it's called a halo sign. And that usually represents edema, an abscess, or granulation tissue. But halo signs aren't usually, I mean, they're seen, but they're seen when the foreign body's been in there for more than 24 hours. Um, yeah, and those are my references, and that's all I have.